Hey, budding herbalists, I'm Maria Noel Groves, and this is a little video that I'm going to put together for you folks who are starting an herbal program with me, or maybe you're considering starting an herbal program with me and you want to know a little bit of an introduction to the series, how you're getting your certificates and other basic housekeeping items. So we'll dive right in, but this is most specifically for the Home Herbalist and the Beyond the Home Herbalist series, which are my two introductory series, and I'll touch a little bit on the advanced series as well. So these are programs that I'm offering. I'm Maria Noel Groves, a clinical herbalist at Wintergreen Botanicals, and I am doing it here in Allenstown, New Hampshire. Sometimes I have classes in person when it's safe to do so. And then I also have classes that I'm doing via live stream through the internet and pre-recorded classes through the internet. And so this is little video is hopefully going to cover a little bit of introductory material for all of those options. So let me move on over to the next slide. And I wanna start off with a little bit of an introduction to myself. There I am in the garden. Let me slide my image down a little bit so you can see me um, in the picture as well. But I'll just give you a little bit of my bio so that I don't have to take up live class time for it. You can get a chance to get to know me if you don't already know me. And so my name is Maria and I practice out in Allenstown, New Hampshire. My business is threefold. It's all about education. So I teach classes, I see clients, and I do quite a bit of writing. I have my two books as well as a lot of writing that I do for various magazines and herb schools and publications and websites. I was originally getting my journalism degree in college when herbs hijacked my life and I started writing about plants. Then I ended up being an editor for Natural Health Magazine, running their fact-checking department and covering their herb beat. And then I left the magazine when I realized that I could actually make a career as an herbalist and went and attended various herb schools. So I would say that I'm mostly a student of Michael Moore from the Southwest School of Botanical Medicine, which I attended in 2004. I also have a lot of training, as many people do, with Rosemary Gladstar, just an amazing human being and herbalist. I've done both her beginner and her advanced programs. I did a beginner program with Nancy Phillips in Northern New Hampshire. And I did a flower essence training with Christine Tolf in New Hampshire as well. And then I'm always learning. I'm always listening to lectures. I'm always doing little things here and there. And so I'm definitely influenced by many other herbalists as well, including folks like David Winston and Jim McDonald, and always continuing to find new teachers to learn from. There's so many great opportunities nowadays, especially with the wonders of the internet. And I've been practicing for more than 20 years now as a full-time practicing herbalist, and I have my practice out here in New Hampshire. I work from my home. I also do a lot of remote work, not only during pandemics, but also just in gen general, I do see clients distance as well as do the online classes. And then when it is safe to do so, when it's not slippery, icy, wintry conditions, and also when we're not in an active pandemic, I do have folks come into my classroom and come into my office for consultations. And I don't sell products. So that's something I should let you all know, because sometimes people will ask, you know, when, when is my shop open or how do I get products? products and product is not what really what I do. And so while I do encourage you to learn how to make your own things, and of course I do make things for myself and sometimes for my clients and for my students, I don't generally sell things to the general public. It's just not my, not my cup of tea, except for my books. I do sell my books. And Let's see, anything else of note? I teach for a lot of different places. So most of my teaching is through my own herb school, but I've also been a guest teacher at places like the Maryland University for Integrative Health and the American Herbalist Guild Symposiums, Mother Earth News Fairs, both online and on site, the Herbal Academy, I'm an adjunct instructor there and many others. And so I really love that opportunity to be able to go out in the community when I have the time to do that because my schedule is pretty busy. And then I have my two books as well. So I will kind of jump into that. And I'm going to move my little thing here. So I have my two books, Body into Balance and Grow Your Own Herbal Remedies. And Body into Balance is my first book. If you're not familiar with these books already, they're really handy. You don't actually need to buy them in order to take my series, my Home Herbalist series and my Beyond the Home Herbalist series very closely follow Body into Balance. That book actually came out of those two courses. And so you do get a lot of very similar content as part of your class materials and your class notes. It's nice to have the book because because it is very visual, very beautifully laid out with lots of great charts and all sorts of other odds and ends, but it's not absolutely required reading in my 
classes since you have your class notes. It is required reading in a lot of other herb schools across the country, which I'm really honored to have that be a textbook in so many different herb schools required or recommended. So Body Into Balance goes into the body systems, much like the Home Herbalist and the Beyond the Home Herbalist series do, where each chapter is a body series and we kind of gradually work our way through that program. And we also cover herbal remedy making. And it's kind of the big picture of herbalism and not just covering herbs, but also covering diet and lifestyle and how things should work in each body system, how they can get out of balance, and then how to use herbs, diet, and lifestyle to bring them back into balance with those useful charts and photographs, as well as a handful of my favorite recipes speckled throughout. So that's probably my best known book, and it is now a bestseller. And I have a newer book that came out in 2019 called Grow Your Own Herbal Remedies. And Grow Your Own Herbal Remedies is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's about growing your own herbs, and it features, you know, kind of everyday herbs that are really safe and wonderful and can be used in a lot of different ways. And we, again, go by body system so that you can customize your garden for what you actually need and like to use for your family and for your family's well-being. So there's a brain boosting garden, there's a, you know, sleep garden, there's a digest, a couple different digestion gardens, depending upon what's going on with your digestion. And each, each little section covers a handful of herbs that are really useful and easy to grow or wildcraft in most of our temperate ecosystems across the United States and certainly here in New Hampshire, and then uh, how to make some remedies with those things. So it's really especially focused on understanding how to use common to use herbs. Sorry for that little pause. My dog was whining and uh, needed to be moved into a different room. You're actually going to meet her in just a moment in an upcoming slide. So also just a few little bit more things about Grow Your Own Herbal Remedies. That book also has a really nice section in the back where we have a profile on each plant and a little bit more detail on how to grow it and medicinal uses, safety concerns, flower essence uses, harvesting, dosages, you know, and which recipes throughout the book that feature that particular plant. So you get a lot of the, the meat on each individual herb in that back section. And then again, there are a handful of really useful charts and things in the appendix. So that's a little bit about those two books, which you can get through my website, wintergreenbotanicals.com, or you can get through any place where books are sold. They are definitely cheaper through places like Amazon and your local bookstores should, if they don't carry them, they should be able to order them for you pretty easily. So next up, I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up that there is a lot of information that I just share for free with the public all the time. And so most of that is shared through my website and that's wintergreenbotanicals.com. And I also have a mailing list. And so approximately each month I send out an email that will give you some announcements on what I have coming up, what kind of classes I have going on, that sort of thing. But then also we'll share articles and seasonal inspiration and musings and various links to different things, recipes, whatever's kind of going on in that season, in that month, I'll share that. So those are two really great things to get connected with. You can sign up for my mailing list on my website. There's an easy spot on the homepage where you can do that if you're interested in getting those monthly emails, or you can just go to my website. There's a blog, there is a virtual herb walk with different seasons. You can go to the class notes page. So most of the little extra informative things are under the learn more tab on my website, which you can see in this picture here. If you click on learn more, you'll see a variety of sub menus that will come down and you can go to each of those sections. And on the blog page, there is a search feature there as well. And so you can search the whole website through that blog page. There's all sorts of great stuff that you get, including things that people ask me for regularly. So the links page will have things like informative websites that I really love and places to get herbs since I'm not selling herbs to the general public. You know, what are some of my favorite herb brands, both locally in New Hampshire, as well as online. Most of my focus is generally going to be on the United States. And then I do have a little bit of a hyper focus on New Hampshire and New England, because that's where I am. I don't really know a two, I don't know a lot about where to get things internationally. And so I would refer you to other folks like the Herbal Academy for resources on that. Or I believe Juliet Blancaspor at Chestnut School of Herbal Medicine has some information on international access to herbs and remedies. I have my favorite books, you know, well beyond my own, just a lot of the books 
books that I recommend my students get at the top and then different topics as you go on through. So if you're particularly interested in mushrooms or foraging or women's health or babies or, you know, any other variety of topics, cooking with herbs, I have little sections on some of the herbs or books that I really like on there. And so many more things that you can check out on the website. And, you know, if you want to become an herbalist, there are a lot of different ways to go about that. And my classes are one option to go about getting your training as an herbalist, but they're certainly not the only way to do it. And if you go through all three of my series, my home herbalist, and then the beyond the home herbalist series, and then the advanced series, you will have a pretty solid start and you would be able to start practicing as an herbalist. Although I would certainly recommend continuing your education further. For example, if you do want to see clients as an herbalist, you should continue to do a lot more clinical practice, clinical mentorships. And uh, those are not programs that I currently offer, but I give resources for in the course materials and also through my website. And you, you know, might you also be using self-study, you might do additional learning programs. And if your goal was to become a clinical herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild, my programs would not give you full, you know, hours in all of the topics that you would need to do that, but it would give you a really solid start to that. And there is information on my website where you can see the breakdown of hours of what the American Herbalist Guild recommends and then what hours you get in each of my series in those topics, including whether you're just attending and you know whether you're doing the homework as well. And so what those add on to that approximately, although certainly people take different amounts of time doing the homework. I also have some resources that I really recommend that students read before they register for a course with me or even with anybody, but especially with me so that you can get a little bit of a full picture of what you're getting into, what the different things you might want to consider when choosing an herb school or deciding a path to become an herbalist. So I have a blog post on becoming an herbalist. I have an hours breakdown of how my series compare, as I just mentioned. And then I also have some frequently asked questions and information policies about my courses, information about certification and all that other good stuff. So just a little bit about the different series that I offer. The Home Herbalist and the Beyond the Home Herbalist are both very similarly structured. So they're both at a somewhat intermediate beginner level. So people can start in as total newbies, or if you've been doing a lot of self-study, but you don't feel like you have that really solid, you know, meat of information and understanding in the body systems and in the specific plants or in remedy making, those are the main topics that we cover in that series. And each of each series has nine classes. And each of those nine classes is approximately three hours, you know, it's actually a little bit more than that. If you take advantage of the various bonus videos for herb walks and, and those kinds of things. But if you are attending live, the live classes, or you're watching the webinars, those are generally about three hours a piece. And they cover an herbal remedy. So the home herbal series, we go through all the really core herbal remedies like making teas and tinctures. And we do cover flower essences a little bit as well. And we talk about making herb infused oils and all sorts of other good, you know, kind of your core herbal remedies. So we do one of those per class. And then we also cover a body system or just kind of a general topic. So we'll cover things like nutritives, digestion, stress and energy, sleep, relaxation, and mood. We cover detox detoxification, blood sugar balance, cardiovascular health, immune health, and reproductive health. And so those are all things that we cover in that very first series. And then in the second series, the Beyond series is not really an intermediate series. It's just a continuation of more topics that didn't fit in that first nine classes. And some really fun topics are in there like lung health and brain health and longevity and vitality tonics and skin health going, you know, kind of a little bit more in depth than we cover in that first series and various other topics. And then we also cover a lot more fun remedies. We repeat tea. The first class of the Beyond series is similar to the first class of the Home Herbalist series, but not identical just because I want anybody who jumps in on the Beyond the Home Herbalist series and maybe didn't do the first one to get a, at least a, a baseline. But we cover more of our backyard teas in that first class versus teas of commerce in the first class of the Home Herbalist series. And 
we, uh, and we also cover a lot of really fun remedies. So we'll cover things like making herbal honey, nut butter bonbons, or making cordials, making oxymels, making hydrosols, making exfoliants, making chocolates where we, you know, we cover or we make truffles and then cover them in chocolate. So there are all sorts of really great, mostly more fun recipes or more food like recipes that we cover in the Beyond the Home Herbalist series. Broth is another topic. I don't recall if I already mentioned that in the video. So that's what you get in the Home Herbalist and the Beyond the Home Herbalist series. The advanced series is the next series. I really don't recommend jumping into the advanced series unless you have a really solid background. You know, I would recommend that you have done my Home Herbalist and my Beyond the Home Herbalist series or that you've covered similar material, ideally through some other formal education. And so I just wanna make sure that folks don't jump into that advanced series without already having a really solid background in the body systems and having a pretty solid materia medica that is an understanding of a, a pretty good selection of plants that I tend to work with regularly that I cover in my book, Body Into Balance, as well as in those first two series. If you are jumping in having not taken my series, but maybe have taken other people's programs, I would recommend that you get a hold of either an electronic copy or a paper copy of Body into Balance so that you can at least get yourself up to speed or double back, you know, go back and check and see what my thoughts are on some of those particular body systems so that you get at least kind of a general idea of what I covered in those first two series. You can always reach out to me too and send me an email and let me know a little bit about yourself and ask me if I think that you're ready for the advanced series. I just don't want folks wasting their time and money going through a program that that might not actually be what fits their needs. But for those who, you know, for, for whom they have that experience and the information in the advanced series is what they're looking for, they really usually do enjoy it. So the advanced series is a very different format altogether, and it is going to be more focused on a wide range of things. So it's less that structure of a body system and a remedy in each class. It, it kind of varies quite a bit and we cover or energetics like hot, cold, dry, damp. We cover the tastes of herbs. We cover a little bit of phytochemistry. We talk a little bit about growing herbs, a little bit of advanced remedy making. We cover a handful of advanced clinical topics. We have guest speakers who come in for certain things like Lyme disease and holistic cancer support. And I teach classes on things like advanced gut repair and thyroid and endocrine health. And we have many, many other great topics, you know, a little bit of tongue assessment that we have some guest teachers come in and teach about. And so you can, you can check out the full lineup on my website to get a, a better feel for that series, but it is more of a hodgepodge of topics that we touch on. And then we kind of move throughout the seasons with information like plant families and taste and phytochemistry that get lumped together in a somewhat harmonious way. And all of my series will include access to all the online online materials. So things like the PDFs of class notes, and I do write pretty, I'm a pretty uh, wordy, I'm an oversharing person. So you'll get these really long PDFs of class notes. You'll also get videos of certain things, especially remedy making. You'll, if I've recorded any webinars, you'll have access to those webinar recordings in those class materials. And then there are audio recordings of classes. Mostly the audio recordings are classes that I taught with classes, you know, with students in my classroom, although some of them are from the the webinar recordings, depending upon which seemed like the better recording. You also, all my series students, so if you've signed up for any one of these series, you'll get a one-year membership to the American Herbalist Guild, which would be $60 to $70 if you were just doing it yourself um, as either a student or an individual. It's not professional membership, but it's general membership, which grants you access to a lot of different lectures and journal articles and some discounts for places like Mountain Rose Herbs and other companies that I just think are so useful to my students that I want to be able to refer them to that I decided it was worth it to purchase the student memberships for my students. So you get one um, per year if you have been registered. So if you register for the Home Herbal Series, you'll get you know a year's membership for that. If you register for two series in the same year, you just get one, one membership and your membership will last for one year. 
You get a lot of different course materials, as I mentioned already. So this just outlines what you're getting. And I think I did discuss all of these already. One thing that I didn't mention was that you do also get slides. So sort of like you see here for slides, those get put into PDF format and anything that's underlined will be hyperlinked so that when you have the PDF open, you can click on that and then it'll open in a web page that maybe has more information or a book page on Amazon or something like that that you can refer to for more info. And, uh, and there are optional herb walks. So when I have local students, I usually do have anywhere from one to a handful of herb walks, depending upon the year and what's going on globally at the time. I just only host students here when it's green and safe out because where I live is really not safe to be traveling to in slippery winter conditions, regardless of whether or not there's a pandemic happening. But I have also been recording lots of herb walk videos and I continue to record those. And so those are accessible to all the series. You get a little extra section in your course materials where you can access those various herb walk videos and you can check that out. So even if you can't attend videos in person or you can't attend those herb walks in person, you can join whenever you like on the pre-recorded video. So, and those will, I expect in the next growing season, I'll record a couple more of those. And you do have, this is a question that comes up frequently. So I'll say it here. I say it in a couple different places. You basically have forever access. There is no deadline. There are some herbal programs that, you know, you have to complete it in one to two years. Otherwise your access to the course disappears. And that's not the case with this. You know, I, you basically have forever access. You can certainly download and save links for or, you know, as long as you like, but you can even go on to the online platforms. Occasionally the links and access may change. So if you go to access it and you find that that link no longer works, just shoot me an email, say, Hey, I took this series back then. And you know, my link doesn't work anymore. Can you send me the new link? And I'm more than happy to do that. So you should always have access. You don't have to complete any particular, you know, when you get the access, you get all the access to all the content basically at once. Um, and so you can, you can poke ahead to another future class if you want to, or you can just go through the material as you see fit. So there are also some other programs that you can't access the next class until you finish and take your quiz and all that, where in my courses, you just have all of that and you can go through it as you like. You get some other series student perks that are only available for students who take a full series at a time versus doing individual, you know, one-off classes because you can request a class, especially for those first two series. You can request any one class and it's not a very expensive thing. And so some people will notice like, hey, if I just request all of the individual classes, it's cheaper than the full series. And there are a couple of reasons for that because you get a lot of benefits as a series student. So one, you're able to submit homework for feedback. And I have some great folks who help out with correcting homework and give really in-depth homework feedback on that. That takes a lot of our time. And that's one of the reasons, you know, the, the time that it takes to do that, you know, either it's my time or they're getting paid to do that. And so that's part of the reason why your course is more expensive. And I think you'll find their feedback really, really valuable in your development as an herbalist. You'll also get a certificate of completion and a graduation pendant if you complete the series, which we'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how you get the certificate because it's not automatic. You actually have to, so you have to earn those certificates of completions in those pendants. And you do get an American Herbalist Guild membership, as I mentioned, which includes access to all sorts of recordings audio and webinars by herbalists around the country and the world, which I think is phenomenal. And then also 20% off Mountain Rose Herbs, as well as other various vendors and places. So in addition to those things, you also get a couple extra perks. And if you are a registered series student, you can go into Google Classroom and go into the introduction page and that will get updated there. So you have access to various Facebook groups. It's not obligated, but it's a great way to connect with your classmates and also ask questions of me that you you know would think other people might be interested in as well. Or you can share like, hey, here's the latest awesome recipe that I made. Or you can just interact with other fellow classmates, which I think is great. And then if you're Local, I highly recommend this isn't something that's only for a, for my students, this is for anybody, but if you're local to New Hampshire, you might consider joining the New Hampshire Herbal Network, which is a chapter of the American Herbalist Guild, and that is free and open to all levels of herbal interest and experience. My students also get, if they're a series student, 
each year that you're a student, you get 20% off Foster Farm Botanicals, which are some really great organically grown herbs in Vermont. And then 25% off Society Apothecary Orders, which is a, a great little herb shop in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And so she is a brick and mortar store, but she also does ship. She doesn't have a big website that lists everything that she has, but you can shoot her an email and she will see what she can get. And so you can get more information about that online in the Google Classroom section. I also have remedy kits and or suggested supplies for students. And this is a little different depending upon which version of the home. This is for home herbalist and beyond. And it's a little different depending upon which series you're doing and how you're doing it. So if you're in person in the classroom, when that is available, you get everything just kind of as part of the course. We physically would be making remedies. You would either go over to the remedy making table at the end of class and get to make something yourself, or you'd watch me demonstrate it. And then everybody gets a sample of say herbal syrup or herbal honey or something like that to bring home. So some of it's hands-on where you're doing it and some of it is demo. So that's just included as part of your course materials and as part of your experience in the live in-person classroom. If you're doing the live stream version of the online series, I have a limited quantity of herbal remedy kits. And those include individual herbs that we're going to talk about in the class, just a handful of those that I think are the most important. And a couple tea blends, you, know, you get a tea blend for each class so that you can sip that tea blend and a, a handful of other things, but mostly it's just the dried herbs. And this is only in the United States and only as those kits are available because of all the planning that has to go into making them. I can only make so many. It's a tremendous amount of work. And if you don't get a kit, but you're in the live stream, then you get a, a discounted rate on the registration because uh, a good chunk of that extra cost of a live stream versus pre-recorded is because of the, the materials as well as the time that it takes for us to put together those remedy kits. And there is no remedy kit for the advanced series, no matter whether you're doing it online or live. There are a few things that we might do when we have in-person years for the advanced series that are remedy based, but for the most part, there's not a kit for that. And then if you do a pre-recorded at your own pace online series with like, say any of them really, but especially home herbalist or beyond, there's no kit associated with that. And that's why those course versions are less expensive is mainly because of the lack of the kit but you can still go ahead and get your own supplies. And if you don't get a kit, I do list the, the remedies and suggested supplies on Google Classroom so you can see what would have been in the kit, but you don't necessarily need to get exactly those ingredients. These courses are very flexible. So as long as you're choosing herbs that are that we're covering in the class or that are at least tangentially related to our class topics, you can go ahead and focus on what herbs you already have or what herbs are in your backyard. I definitely encourage doing that so that you can get familiar with the plants. You don't need to go and buy a whole slew of herbs that you don't already have, especially if you already have a handful of herbs at your disposal. So feel free to play around with that. If you need to buy herbs, I have listings on the remedy kit pages as well as on my website. So you can get them from your garden. You can get them from the grocery store, from say the spice, the herb and spice sections of the produce section or the cooking section. You can get them from farms. That's always one of the best quality places to get them. You can get them from herb shops. That's usually also a really great place to get them. Natural food stores will have some remedies and there are various online suppliers. And of course that's really popular too. So again, refer to that intro section in Google Classroom for more tips. So how do you get your certificate? Like, let's say you're going through the program and for some people, it's really important for them to get a certificate. It's not required to get a certificate. You don't really need one, but if you personally really want a certificate, what that does is it tells you, tells you and tells anybody else you show the certificate that you went through the program and that you completed the program and that this is what that program covered and that there were this many hours associated with that program. So it's a little different depending upon what format of class you take as far as how how you get your certificate. So if you are here live in person um, and whether that's live stream or live in person in the classroom, you need to have attended at least 80% of the classes and you need to have read the class notes and if you're doing, well, you need to have read the class notes, you need to attend at least 80% of the classes, and then you need to make remedies. And if you're live in person, then what we do in class counts for that. You can do it in addition to that, but you can also just report on what we made in class or what you saw me make in class, and then you got to try. And it's really important to get 
a lot of detail in what you're making, what the ingredients were, what the recipes and proportions were, um, how, you know, taking it, you need to finish with the remedy. Maybe it takes a month for it to sit before you're done. You'd want to wait until it's done to hand in your homework so that you have a chance to try it and report back. Cause I really want you to have that experience with the plants. And if you're in the live stream, because we don't get to have that that level of interaction in the live stream series. And, you know, you could be making or not making things during those live classes, what that we're doing online. I want you to make at least one run remedy per class and email me or send me in a, you know, in a printed copy, your remedy reports for each of those things, because I don't want you going through the series, just attending online classes and having never made or tried or experienced plants directly. I need to make sure that you have that experience. So it is also part of the homework to make remedies. And so if you're doing all the homework, which is optional, if you're doing a live version of the series, but if you're doing all the homework, those remedies reports would be part of that. But if you choose not to do the homework in the live series, you can still get a certificate, but you have to have made and reported back on those remedies. If you're online and doing the pre-recorded, so you're not in the live stream class, then I do expect you to read the notes, listen to the webinars and or the class audio, watch all the remedy videos and do all the required homework. So it is required in order to get your certificate if you're doing the pre-recorded. Advanced students, uh, it's a little bit different. So if you're doing the advanced student, the advanced series online, regardless of whether it's a live stream or not, then you really do need to do all the homework and go through the content in order to get your certificate at the end. So hopefully that answers your questions, but let me know if it doesn't. So also I want to let you know that there's this overriding program that I have. And I thought about trying to have a quote unquote certificate herbal certificate training program. And then I realized that what I already do in my first couple series is a really great basis. So instead of making one program that you have to do that covers everything, it's three separate programs that together tie in and create the herbalist certificate program. So for those, instead of just getting a certificate of completion for each individual series, because each series has its own certificate of completion that we just talked about, there is this overarching herbalist certificate and you will get that if you complete all three of my series and do all accompanying the home all the accompanying homework regardless of what format you take have taken the program in to get that herbalist certificate you do need to do all the homework in all three series and it's only for students who are taking my three series you can jump into the advanced series if you've done somebody else's but you wouldn't be eligible for that herbalist certificate and the goal with those three programs is you now really have a pretty solid basis and you can start doing some things as an herbalist and then you may have further learning to do and you can learn more about that on my website but a little bit about those certificates, you know, these certificates, all of them are really just proof that you did this. There is no legal or regulatory standing for my certificates at the end of a series. And the same thing for any herbal program throughout the whole country. The United States does not have any sort of a licensure or national certification or anything like that for herbal medicine. So certificates really don't mean anything in that sense, except that they are a piece of paper that say that you did what you did and that you can have that on your wall or you can show that to somebody to say, look, this is what I did. But they don't give you any specific benefits in the world as far as, you know, now I'm legal or now I'm approved or now I'm better than somebody else. They really don't have that meaning at all. You can use any of the class hours, both homework class hours and the in-class class hours, as well as listening to lectures and all of that. Keep track of that. Uh, you also get that as part of your as part of your certificate. So that'll be easier to keep track of that way. But you can definitely use those hours towards the AHG professional membership requirements. And then once you've got more than what you get in my classes, because my classes won't quite give you enough, then once you've acquired that, you can go ahead and submit your application to the American Herbalist Guild if that's important for you. Again, that also doesn't have any sort of real legal or regulatory status, but it's the closest thing that we have for better or for worse in our herbal community as a, a kind of national standard for herbalism. 
it's a whole bunch of, um, it's a whole can of worms as over whether or not herbalism should or shouldn't be regulated or nationally licensed or anything like that. I personally prefer having it not regulated and unlicensed, but there's quite a wide variety of opinions and it's, it's a pretty big topic that we're not going to get into right now. I also want to, you know, mention that if you don't care about getting a certificate or you don't want to do like it, that's all optional. So you could just attend classes, listen to classes, go through the course material and never do the homework at all. And, you know, depending upon the format of class, you may not be eligible for a certificate, but if you don't care whether or not you have a certificate and you're just looking for the information, that's totally fine. It's completely up to you. The homework is really useful to help solidify those, those points. And then also it's great for me as a teacher to know that you're understanding what you're going through, to know that you're, you know, you're expanding your understanding of herbalism as you go through the series. You'll get really great feedback from me as well as from the folks who help correct the first two series homework to help you grow as an herbalist and learn to develop. But it's a personal choice as far as whether or not that's important to you for the series. And the homework is really time consuming, especially in those first two series. There's a quiz portion. There are some monographs that you'll need to do, which are individual studies into specific plants. And there's the remedy making component for each class, you have to do those different parts. And it's time consuming students spent anywhere from two hours. And that's for like really fast academically minded students to yeah, I have some students that spend up to 10 hours per class on their homework outside of, you know, going through the course content. So it does take some time. And that's totally normal. And so don't get too discouraged if you're doing it thinking like, wow, this is taking a really long time. That's that's pretty common. And you can take however long you want to finish the program. So if you feel like you need more time, you can definitely take more time. So this just goes into the details of the Home Herbalist and the Beyond the Home Herbalist series homework. So you get the quiz, which goes into just kind of covering a lot of the core, core concepts of that class and making sure that you kind of understand what we covered. I'll do this remedy where you'll make one or two remedies that we focus on in that class, and then those monographs, which are detailed plant profiles. And I used to have students do four monographs, and we've changed it up based on some student feedback and test driving it. We now have you do two plants per series instead of four, but the monographs are more detailed and have more things that you're going to want to be researching. So it doesn't actually take you that much less time. And I am also requesting now with those new monograph style that you try every herb in some format and some, whether you made it or you bought it to try each of the herbs that you're making those, mon doing those monographs on. So it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily any less time for homework, but it, you get to know those plants a little bit more deeply. And so the feedback that I had from students who had been doing it the old way and then got to try the new way is that they just found it a little bit more meaningful instead of trying to like cover as many plants as possible really quickly, they could just deep dive into two plants and really get to know those really well and get to experience them too, which originally was not part of it, you know, with the assumption of when my series first began, they were only in person and you got to taste things in class. But now that we have more online opportunities and more online students, I want to make sure that you're experiencing those plants and you can focus on whatever plants are at least tangentially related to the class material of that particular you know week as well as you know whatever herbs you have on hand you can focus on but they should be at least somehow related to the class content I have some suggested ones, but you don't have to follow those suggested ones. And I do ask that, especially in those first few classes, we're going to be grooming you to, you know, make sure that you're doing your monographs in a certain way or making sure that you're using really good resources. And so wait to get feedback on your previous homework before you hand in the next one so that you have a chance to apply the feedback that you got in the previous homework. That's really, really helpful. So a little bit about those monographs, and there's a lot of information that you'll get in those homework assignments that will guide you through. But I just want to mention, because I think people, some there's just so many pieces and parts. I am a very academically minded person. So that's who you're signing. That's what you're signing up for if you take my series. And uh, that might be a decision in your, whether or not you want to take a series with me. But each monograph is a, Materia Medica is kind of the group of these individual monographs. And these are each 
focuses of plant profiles on one plant where you kind of deep dive into one plant. And as you collect all of them, the collection of all of them together is your Materia Medica of those plants. And so you're going to do two per class and you're going to choose herbs that are at least tangentially related to the topics of that particular class. And each one is going to require at least three different recommended sources. So using my sources that I recommend, if you want to incorporate different sources, please check with me because I want to make sure that they're good quality. And you do need to fully annotate. And there's information on this in your class notes in more detail and including a sample monograph so you can see what that looks like. But it's very important that you use three and that you annotate so that we can see exactly where you got all the information that you're putting. We want things to be written in your own words and that there needs to be at least one science or evidence-based resource as part of your three minimum sources that you're using for each plant profile. And that's not to say that science is better. In fact, I actually think the herbalist written resources are better quality information, but it's just so that you get that perspective. So you know what's out there in the science and you do need to use one of the sciencey resources that I am recommending. And again, if you have other ones that you want to use, you can run them by me. Just, I don't want you to be wasting time using resources that might not be very good. Remember, I used to run a fact-checking department, so I am a little bit of a stickler about this kind of thing. And if you're not academically minded, it can be a little bit of a challenge. Just know that that's normal for us to go in and say, hey, you know, maybe don't use this book because of this reason or this website for this reason. It's not quite as ideal. Consider these ones instead that are going to give you better quality information or more information. And we're just kind of grooming you so that you have a really good set of go-to resources and to refine your research skills and get to know plants really well while you're doing it. If you're using historical sources, like for example, Henriette Kress has a lot of great historical information on her website, you'll definitely want to pair that with something that's more modern. And those historical resources are great, but I wouldn't want those to be any more than one of your three resources. And you'll probably end up needing more than three resources to be able to get all the pieces and parts in those new in those new styles of monographs, but three is kind of the bare minimum if you can if you can get all the information that you need from just those three resources. If you have different parts of plants that do different things or do similar things, it's important to note that. And if they're different, then to say what different things do. Like for example, roses, we use the petals and the flowers pretty differently than how we use the rose hips. So you could just do a monograph on rose flowers and then maybe later do a, a monograph on rose hips. Or if you're gonna do it all in one on say rose, I would want you to be separating out in the actions and the medicinal uses. And you'd wanna be separating out what when you're talking about roses versus when you're talking about you know rose hips because they do vary and that's important because you need to understand that later on if you go to apply that information it might be really different nettle is another plant where the leaf is the main thing that we use so you could just do a monograph on specifically nettle leaf but if you did a monograph on nettle and you were also talking about using the seeds and the root you'd need to clarify which actions go with and medicinal uses go with the leaf which things go with the root which things go with the seeds because they're all pretty different. There's a little bit of overlap, but really very little. Or if it's a plant that has different parts being used, but they're all pretty similar, like say marshmallow, we can use the leaves, the flowers, and the roots of marshmallow all pretty similarly. There's a little bit of degree of sliminess and mucilage depending upon which part you're using, but the overall uses are really still pretty similar. So I'd want you to state that in your monographs as well. And go ahead and check out your homework for a little bit more detail and samples and directions on that. But those are some of the key points. For the advanced series homework, that's really quite different. And it also will depend a little bit on which format that year you're doing, whether it's a live stream or pre-recorded all at your own pace, or if it's a year where we're doing classes in person here in the classroom. But the homework is generally going to be more skills-based. So instead of having that that quiz, the monographs, the, the remedy making, it's just gonna be a handful of maybe like one to four assignments per class. And it might be more on say, let's do a case study or here's some sample cases and what kind of theoretical protocol would you give this person with X um, concerns or X energetics or constitutions? Or you know, I'll have you do some identifying of plants. That's another big thing that we cover in the advanced series is looking into identification and botany, understanding research, 
So you might dig into PubMed for a handful of assignments and develop your science and your research skills for that, or you'll be identifying plants and keying them out and saying why you're keying them out, what, what taking pictures of them, or you might be making a remedy, say, you know, when we do mushrooms, you'll want to make a mushroom remedy and try it, you know, say how you made it and report back on it. So it's a little bit more loose in the structure and much more skills based in that. And if you're doing the in-person classes or the live streams, there are discussions that take place. And if you're not in those, then you would be doing those discussion activities as part of your homework as well similar kind of style. There are monographs for the advanced series, but it's just four for the whole series. So as opposed to having them for each class, and that's because I want you to be working on so many other aspects of the skill set. And I assume that you've already been doing, you know, monographs and things for the first couple series or earlier in your education. And those monographs are even more detailed than what you're going to do. So they're actually quite time consuming and they're due at the end of the series, but you'll have four and we may break it up so that we have you do them throughout the series as well so that you don't have this big lump of homework to do all at the end because people tend to leave things to the last possible moment. There's also a final project presentation and you can choose pretty much any topic you want where you do a short paper that's all annotated and well-researched and then you do a presentation in class or online to the class group and just like a 15 minute presentation. So it's not really super intense, but it's a great chance for you to delve into whatever you're passionate about herbalism and to help you grow in your goals on your path or in whatever things you're, that you're interested in. So it's very flexible in what that topic might be. And I love, and that's one of my favorite parts of the advanced series is getting to see what choose, students choose as their topics and then getting to learn you know, all sorts of different things that they've delved into that might be different from what they've learned in my own classes already. And in the live stream, we do those interactive activities as well. So I mentioned before that my dog was interrupting me and I had to pause a moment to move her into a different room. And if you are here in person or you're listening to recordings or we're in the live stream, there's a good chance that you are going to hear Rishi hanging out or you might see her walking around if you're here in person. So this is my lovely little rescue dog and she's super sweet. She's generally pretty chill, but she does tend to get bored and a little bit frenetic of energy right around class time, unfortunately. So you might hear her, you you might hear us talking about her in a recording or you might hear her flap her ears or drink water or something like that or you might just kind of you know notice some weird sounds in the background and most likely that is my dog Rishi she doesn't really bark almost ever I think there's a recording where you hear one of like the 10 times in her whole life that she's barked happened to be on the recording I think she was doing it in her sleep or something but she's she's mostly pretty quiet but you will sometimes hear her or I might get a little distracted or students might get distracted or I might ask a work study student to take her out for a potty break or something like that. So that's Rishi. She's really sweet. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see pictures of her. She is my, my child. I don't have any kids. So my dog is my kid. So I'm definitely a major dog mom. And that's it for our little intro recording. Hopefully you've stuck with it all this time and that you got all this really useful information. If you have questions, concerns, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Email is definitely the best way for me to communicate with people because I can do it when I'm at my desk and I don't lose track of it. I don't I don't move it out of a folder, or delete it until I've responded to it. So, um, so definitely go ahead and email me. I have a couple of different email addresses, but for you emailing me, you can use maria at wintergreenbotanicals.com. Also be aware that I end up in spam folders. So when I email you back, your email program might immediately bounce me or put me in spam folders or whatever. So I usually use my Gmail account when I'm emailing back to people because it's a little less apt to end up in a spam folder, especially if you're a Gmail user, which more and more of my students are nowadays. But you know, if you're expecting to hear back from me or get a reminder about class or something like that and you're not seeing it, First, check your spam and junk folders because it might be there. And if you still don't see it, please reach out to me directly. And I want to make sure that you get whatever content you should be getting. So don't hesitate to reach out if you don't see an email coming through with your course access or the reminder email with your Zoom links or anything like that. Or you just emailed me questions and I haven't gotten back to you. I usually don't answer messages and 
night or on the weekends. And sometimes I'm busy and I just may not be able to get back to you for a day or two, but usually I'm pretty prompt at responding to people during business hours. So you should get something back from me within a day or two. So thanks so much for considering these herb classes or having registered for the herb classes already and getting into the groove of things. And I look forward to having you in class and getting to know you better. Have a great rest of your day.